Like well, how do you call the rain when it's yeah. coming out? In Danish, it's Hagel. Howl, howl. We say okay. Hagel. We say Howl in Danish. Howl, okay. Yeah. Howl. It's close. Yeah. It was a lot of Howl. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Danish language for you right there, right? <laughs> it's I just remember. Rawr, rawr. I remember the Gledeli Yeah. How oh, I, it was for me a, a tongue twister. Tony in the hot chair. <laughs> how, uh, how is it to be uh, Anthony Jung right now at this point? <laughs> That's an interesting question to start with. Mm, I'm pretty, pretty relaxed, pretty calm right now. I feel good. Um, I'm actually in a, in a in a good place in my life right now, and there's not too much to complain about. You've been here for almost four years in uh, in Brumby now. I would like to, to maybe go back to after your first year here, you were here on loan. Yeah. Have you ever, had you on that time ever imagined that you would stay here for four years? No, no. Um, okay, but I also never thought that I'm gonna leave my area there around Frankfurt. <laughs> Then I went to Leipzig. And I never thought I would leave Germany. Then I was on loan here in Brönby. And I also was ex expecting actually to, to leave after the year, to have a, have a good season, to come find the rhythm again and then go somewhere else. Uh, yeah, but it turned out totally different. Yeah, how, how do you remember it and, and, and what was it? about Brumby that made you stay here and made sure that you're still here? Yeah. Um, I had actually uh, a difficult year in Ingolstadt back then. I was on loan there uh, from Leipzig for a year. It was Bundesliga back then and uh, I didn't have that many that many games uh, played and I, I didn't really know what's going on. And um, yeah, then actually, of course, the contact came from uh, Zorniger. Back then, um, yeah, he, he actually called me like pretty early during the transfer window and was, I remember the, the, the question first and I said, Copenhagen, Brøndby, Denmark, you know, like, ah, it was so far, you know, it was so far away from my mind. And then yeah, it turned out that it's, it would be difficult in this transfer window to, to actually find also something. And um, I mean, i, I uh, yeah, trained and uh, played under the coach uh, back then. Uh, pretty successful. I mean, we had the promotion to the second Bundesliga back then. And then uh, I think it was uh, one and a half year more with him. And um, yeah, then the way it turned out the way that I would be here for a year on loan. And yeah, of course, expectations were not uh, i would not say pretty high but i didn't really know what to expect you know it's a new country it's a it's a it's a big club of course in germany um i knew about the club it's a, it's still a, a very big club and um yeah it was also for me i think the step to to someone with coach uh, with Zorniger back then um who know me so maybe it was also a bit more secureness for me that I, I will I will train under uh, um, yeah a coach who who knew me from before and yeah there was of course um, a, a good reason for me to to see what's gonna how it will be here. Mm. Yeah. Um, how was your your relationship with uh, Alex and how did you experience the whole? Uh, When he was leaving and, and you saw the time fly and more and more Germans were leaving mm -hmm. Burnby and now it's you and yeah. Marvin left. Yeah. Uh, so, so how did you experience all that period? Um, yeah, of course, you, I saw that uh, who was here uh, at the time before I came. Um, and uh, of course, you could see German coach is bringing in some German players and um, 
yeah, that also uh, yeah, made the, the first steps here pretty easy for me. I mean, uh, it's always good to have guys who speak your language. Um, but of course, I know also they all speak very good English. And uh, yeah, then um, it was it was actually an easy start for me here. I mean, of course, I was not in my in my best shape to be honest when I when I came here because. It was a little bit tricky time back then. I couldn't train with uh, with, the, with, the, with Leipzig when I came back from the, the year on loan. So I was trying to uh, keep myself fit. But this is also, uh, yeah, you don't really know what's going on. But still um, came here, had my <laughs> private preseason, if you can say it, with Aaron. That was a tough time, actually, like just physically, but also a little bit mentally because uh, I actually, yeah, I wanted to to play, I wanted to help, you know, I wanted to just uh, get going, get integrated and everything as fast as possible. And um, yeah, then the first uh, months played in, of course, if I can follow up now with uh, yeah, what uh, happened um, right before also uh, coach uh, Alex left and um, yeah, it, was, it was just a pretty, I would say, also emotional time, you know. I mean, also very, very tough for us to to get the championship out of our hands in this time. Um, it's still hard to like think about it because it was just, uh, yeah, a very good year, you know. We we played very well, and uh, yeah, it was just just tough to see also the fans, you know. Then the reaction in Horsens, you know, when they almost. Uh, went on the pitch and you kind of understand it because it's like sometimes it, it seems it's all they have you know and uh, as a player to to also experience this is, is not nice but also you know you you take this these scenes also and try to 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 yeah to sort it somehow and also learn from it um yeah but in general um I don't know how the expectation were also from the club, you know, and also from outside. I think they were not expecting it that we're like up there in the second year when Alex was here. Mm. And then, um, yeah, having something in the hand, but then still lose it. So it was a very, very emotional year. The first year was really like most of the time up, and pretty then steady, heart down. <laughs> and then really crushed down. Like you would not see the punch coming. And then, yeah. Uh, did you ever think in your time, okay, this is it, I will leave this madhouse? What do you mean? Did you ever think during this time here that, okay, now I will, I want to leave Brandy? Um, in my whole time here? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually, um, I think... Seve can confirm it that we actually had a lot of conversations. Um, it was about the time where I was feeling the club is kind of um, giving up a bit in the transfer politic. You know, I came here to play for for Europe. Actually, that was the goal that I that you have the chance here to maybe come through the, the group stage and play European games. And when I had the feeling that it was not going, that like this, um, um, the big dream was kind of destroyed and it fell apart a bit. And then, um, yeah, of course, then back then we had Trolls back, sports director then, Ebbe was here for, for not that long, but um, yeah, there was just the time where where you feel also, of course, it was also money-wise that you know the club uh, yeah, had had a little problem or a little bigger problem uh, money-wise, and you could see that also, like everything got a little bit, you know, reduced. And this was the time where I questioned and asked myself if this is the right place to be right now in my career and as a player and as a human being, you know, if this is what I want. And this is a question you ask yourself in this time. And I was, I was doubting, yeah. But Sevi uh, 
said that you you had to stay. I think this was the time when yeah. we sold uh, Kaiser in the uh, yeah 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 in yeah. Of course, and, uh, and on top of that, uh, you yeah you saw that players leaving. Of course, there was another reason um, where you were like oh, like kind of left and right. Everybody's going. What's going to happen now? You know, where is the club? See, you know, where do they see themselves? Where do they want to be? And did he convince you, or did you just have to stay and then? see for yourself what <clears throat> development that you got into i don't know if you can say convince but it was more like a you know it was more uh, an exchange of thoughts so um i could see the idea behind and of course now it's much easier to talk about it because you could see the sense behind it you could see that it was the right decision from him from cv uh, in in first uh, but also of course that i um stayed um but um yeah there were a lot of a lot of talks you know also um when uh, nils came um a new assistant coach with Jesper, martin uh, also like you know he took over from alex martin and uh, matze yeah isle back then and then uh, Reto was assistant again, and you didn't know really how, how this would play out, you know? So, um, yeah, it was a very, very uh, um, uncertain future. <laughs> so you didn't really know what's going to happen. Will it be okay? Will it be shit? You don't know. And, um, yeah, it, there was many, many question marks, if you can say that. Yeah, yeah. but... Uh Actually, this much uncertain time, uh, and I really do understand it. It was an uncertain time also for us fans. Yeah. Where, where, where are we going? But um, it led to the best time of your career. Can I can I say that? Playing wise, football wise. Mm, yeah. On the highest level that we've seen you. Uh, yeah, yeah, here. yeah, definitely here. But I think also. I can say that also in my career that I really reached uh, a high level. Yeah, mm. I also felt the same on the pitch and um, yeah. Actually, I'm still thinking about this. What Sevi said to me um, when he was talking about uh, it. It sounds a bit rough, but when he was talking about cutting heads off to let new heads grow. And this is actually a good uh, uh, saying to describe the the whole scenario. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And you feel like your your head was I that think place, time and place to grow. It just came out. Uh, mm. <laughs> the heads were cut off, so you had to take over responsibility. I mean, there was. Uh, I also felt responsible, of course. The squad is young. Um, I will be forever young. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was time to, I, I was never a guy who like uh, hide or some, somewhere, you know, I was also, I was feeling also responsible and uh, in a good position in my first year. Um, but it was more obvious and obvious when you saw players leaving left and right kind of, and then the time was right, yeah. But also uh, getting this new position, um as a central defender in a yeah. three back, yes. um, changed a lot for you. Uh, suddenly, you're one of the top players in in the whole league, mm -hmm. uh, also in the eyes of the experts. Maybe in, in, in a long time, you were a little bit an unseen mm -hmm. uh, gem. You know what I mean? Yeah. And suddenly, yeah. you're out there, up there. How how was that for you to to you grab the position and you took it? You know. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, we talked also a lot about it, but uh, it was, I think, also a big part of it was the change of the position, maybe, uh, also the change of the formation, because I think uh, I can reach my highest potential in our system, in our idea of the game, um, in this position, actually, on the left center back position. More responsibility, more influence on the game with the ball and also against it. And, um, yeah, of course, also the freedom to have uh, uh, in also taking the ball a little bit more up, you know, maybe I would not describe myself as a classical centre-back, mm. that's uh, I'm everything but that, so 
um, yeah, it made also maybe we you could see it in, in the beginning of, of, of everything that also we had the moment of surprise and uh, I really benefit from the surprise that like maybe you don't expect to dr dribble or you have to have a dribbling center back sometimes mm -hmm. here and there and um, yeah we, 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 we could use it we could transform uh, also my influence on the game of course in the team performance uh, we benefit as a team from it uh, I think at least and uh, yeah that made me also grow in my game. Yeah. You said in the beginning of the interview that you never thought you'd leave uh, Germany. Mm. And now you lived four years in, in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, mm. how, has, how has that been for you living in Denmark? And how has the family situation been? Has your wife been here the whole time? Or how has the personal life been? Yeah. yeah. Um, in general, of course, it's a beautiful city with beautiful people. Uh, I mean, very open-minded uh, um, people around you very friendly you know very you know you're always <laughs> I think this is what most of us Germans learn here to also get a gear down breathe a bit mm -hmm. because in Germany is a little bit more maybe um, fast living so take a breath also maybe a little back seated think about the situation twice and make a good decision and um, yeah, the life has been has been good so far. Um, as I said, very nice city. Um, also, of course, uh, I mean, I think it's also connected to to the life at work, if you can say that. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm playing most of the games, so you will, I think, but maybe you have to ask my wife about it, but you won't see me. Um, yeah, maybe being there with a negative mindset for many weeks or months, you know. I mean, of course, you will, you can get me on the wrong leg if we come home from a, from a defeat or something. But I think this is with everybody. Um, but right now, uh, yeah, my wife is, is with me. Um, she also had a little bit uh, tougher period where it was uh, yeah, hard for her to, to find something, to find a job in, in her area, um, what she wanted to do. So um, it was not always easy or in a balance with harmony and everything and uh, nothing, you know, but life's not perfect, that's how it is. So um, yeah, there was also a time where she uh, actually left for a couple of months to just get reset, you know, also we are, um, yeah, both of us very family close. So um, for us, it's always important to to have the family around and also have the opportunity to have some one or two days. Of course, uh, how will be how will we be here with uh, with three days and everything? <laughs> <laughs> and um, but to also enjoy time at home. And due to the fact that we have two uh, French bulldogs. It's not as easy to just hop on a flight and go home. So for us, three days uh, means that you have to evaluate if we drive home. And from Copenhagen to uh, Wiesbaden, it's close to Frankfurt. It's about a nine to 10 hour drive. And um, yeah, so I think it's easy to say if we would have had like a three hour ride home it would have been much easier in these terms yeah but um as i said but she came also back uh, refreshed you know with charged uh, batteries um and yeah so what do uh, i, I talked to some of the the younger guys in the squad and they 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 call you a big brother like you're <laughs> You're a bit big brother in the team because yeah. you're forever young, you know, <laughs> but you're older than them. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, how, how, how do you see that um, role? Is, is, is it big brother? Is, it, is that a, a good term? Yeah, I definitely prefer big brother than father <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it, it keeps me a little younger yeah. than, than this. Father to be soon, but not to them. True, this is right. Um, but uh, yeah, of course, it's... I know that uh, 
my role is also to help out the, the young guns, you know. If they have anything, they can come up. I mean, I will not ask for, for everything, but I have always uh, open ears if, if there's anything also beside the pitch. I mean, this was never the case, but if there's any question, you know, they want to know something, I try to help out. I try to, um, to help them also on the pitch uh, in training, you know, uh, especially if they're in front of me or next to me in my position, uh, a lot of communication with them. And uh, as I said, if there's anything, can always ask, but I'm also glad to hear it, that, that the, 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 the boys uh, see me as a big brother and um, yeah, I try to fulfill my role there. <laughs> and um, what do you like to do? What are your interests besides playing in, the, in Burnley? Ooh, of course you have, I don't know if you can say that, the, the dogs you have, I don't know if it's a hobby, it's more responsibility. So I mean, my wife, I actually, Mostly after after training uh, on tour, so we go a little uh, around for about an hour with the dogs, let them have their their walk. Um, my, one of my dogs is a little bit special because he had a, a, a collab disco two oh. and a half years ago, so he's in a wheelchair. That's wow. actually um, uh, yeah, but he's he's totally fine um, from his his mentality and everything. So. You can imagine how often people are stopping by and uh, yeah, but just leaving some positive comments there, you know, because they've never seen it before, but he's, he's still so fit at home um, and also outside. So he's, uh, he's really uh, 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 fighting a real warrior, if you can say that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, beside the dogs, of course, uh, as most of the guys, um, I grew up with with consoles, with gaming. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's also connected to this um, social contact to my friends back in, in Germany, I think, because uh, yeah, we are, we are, we're, play, we're playing actually a lot. So um, my wife's not always happy about it, but uh, that's how it is. I try to mix it up with a movie with her then also mm. some of the days and then, yeah jumping out of the plane in, in some, some games there. And um, so I would say the dogs and maybe the gaming life. How do you, as a professional footballer, try to balance the gaming life and especially the streaming? Mm. Um, because that becomes openly to the fans. Yeah. And in tough periods on the pitch and, and that you know that uh, can be a little bit of a, I don't know how to say it, but... but in Germany we say, Zwickmühle, standing between the chairs. Is yeah. this what you want to say? I think kind you know of. what I mean mm. because it. Do you think like ah, maybe it's not the time to go streaming now? It's always or? two sides of mm. the the medal, you know. It's uh, yeah. I also you all also think about this. I mean, uh, I started this a year ago. I streamed here and there. Um, it made actually a lot of fun because especially the interaction with the fans in this, you know, that you just um, share this side of you, what is like, it sounds a bit stupid, but what is totally normal, you know, I mean, how many kids or how many, I mean, I'm not a kid anymore. Maybe I'm a big kid, you know, but uh, I'm also playing video games um, to just uh, yeah have this side of you. Uh, shown and uh, to just uh, have the interaction also with fans is, is actually pretty nice. Um, but there's also, I mean, I've uh, never had this uh, confrontation or discussion with uh, some of the viewers because I also try to keep the balance a bit, you know. I mean, there's time to come online and to stream and there's maybe time not to show up, but there's also a really thin line because um, you know, why should I own, only post pictures in victory? Why should I only post pictures uh, when it's running good, you know? Because I get less likes or less comments, like who cares? So <laughs> I was also thinking about that, but in general now, uh, I, I'm still think, I still think it's a good idea. Uh, if you have like two days a week, where you say fixed days, you know, come in mm -hmm. live, talking, gaming a bit, hanging out, just chilling, you know. 
just chilling a bit, you know. And um, but I, I stopped it also because it's uh, it's it's also not like it takes a bit energy, you know. Mm -hmm. Like if you if I think about like going live now, and I mean it's not that I had like so many viewers or something or so many guys who come into the stream to hop on, but it is something you consider. And then I just thought, you know. There's also other way of communication. Of course, now it's a bit tricky time. There's no autographs or something. We don't have the kids anymore here. So it would actually been a, a good year to do that. But um, yeah, I decided different. Against runners. You were the first guy who got called down to mm -hmm. Susan. And I, I know you guys know that it this means something. True. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, of course, it's, uh, if you come here as a new player, you know, they have to kind of check you out first, you know, also uh, what type of player are you? Because I think this is just a theory, I don't know if it's true, but if you, I don't know if I'm a type of player you, you cheer for, like from the play style. I think uh, maybe more aggressive players are maybe a little bit easier to be in this fan favorite role, you know, because um, maybe an opening pass is not as obvious as a sliding tackle and winning the ball, you know, <laughs> and I'm sliding, I'm sliding not that often, you know, <laughs> not really. So, um, yeah, but of course, I'm um, if we think about this, um, what actually you kicked off in the Twitter world, <laughs> how it responded, you know, the echo was really big and uh, yeah, just amazing, you know, I mean, not really words for it to describe. And uh, I also noticed that, you know, you get called out uh, in the first and um, yeah, it's it's been such nice four years, you know, we really support wise in the whole country, clear number one, no doubt. I hear that uh, some of the fans, what they actually like, because we still don't know where you play after mm. this season. You don't know, I don't know. So the fans don't know, mm. but you have during this whole time been very honest about your situation. Mm -hmm. um, has that been like an option you made with with open eyes? Like it's important to me for me to be honest about it because you could have said politician kind of answer and mm. Mm. you know I've heard it many times in this business. Yeah, the business is what it is, you know. So what you say is how much does it worth, you know? I don't know. In, in general, I think it's always good to be open and transparent with it. I mean, there's some things that maybe, you know, that have to stay inside also. But uh, in general, I don't want to, I don't want to say regret, but you know, I just, it's just natural for me to try to be honest, at least, you know, it's not like that. I don't, I'm always, uh, you know, that I'm praising, I'm, you know, I'm also not perfect in this terms, definitely not, but uh, it was not a decision I made, it was just more a feeling, you know. And do you think that that turned out well? Because <sighs> I think uh, were... the feedback is at least not negative. Um, so also when you say it, you know, that I mean, you, you, you know what's really going on in the scene. And so I trust your, your, your opinion about it. And I respect that also because um, maybe not everybody is taking it in the right place. You know, maybe some of them, they maybe feel a little bit stepped on the foot or, or you can say that, you know. So for me, it was actually just a feeling that I had. So. And it is true, we don't know where you're going to play after this uh, yeah. season. Um, yeah. How is it to, can you balance the, the position you have in the league with four games left and this big decision? Because it is a big decision, mm. both for you and your 
family and for yeah. Brunby and for, for every, everybody. Yeah, of, of course. I mean, right now I'm, I'm actually feeling really good because uh, one is uh, it's pretty simple, you know, it's, it's pretty simple math. <laughs> When I give everything and I perform, I help the team. It's good for the for the club. And it's also good for maybe getting other options. Is 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 it is how it is. So um for me it's clear that I, I as long as I'm here, as long maybe more than than uh, uh, the the summer now, uh that I will uh, put everything in. Doesn't matter if a contract is expiring or we play against the last position or the first. So it was, was pretty clear to me to go in and try to not overthink situations. I mean, of course, there's like this this pressure you have, and there's also, but there's also this uh, yeah this feeling that is is there's pressure, but there's also no pressure. You know, it's hard to describe. You mentioned earlier that. Um This new position changed a lot for you. Mm. How much does it mean in your decision making now? Because you know the role you have here. Yeah. Um, but it's not like there's 10 teams in the Bundesliga, the second Bundesliga, yeah. you play with a, a with a free back. So, so how much that, does that mean in your decision making? True, uh, definitely. I mean, um, I know I can play both, um, like at least in a three back. Um, to play the left center back is, is right now. Um, yeah, I know the position by now. Uh, in the four back, of course, we we also changed the system again in the last game that I play full back. Um, but I actually played also in a in a in a four back in the center back position. So right now, um, I know that I can play both, and I know it's it's good to 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 be uh, multifunctional as a player, if you can say that. You have played as a number 10 also this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it was actually it was a cup game, right, yeah. where I was pretty far forward. But well, it was youth times actually when I when I played it. But um, yeah, as I said, it's good to 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 be able to play a different position. And um, but of course, I know the system here suits me very well. In general, the the idea of the game with the ball that we really try to play also uh, out of the back and not just kick and rush the game. And um, yeah, as I said, um, I think right now um, I'm yeah close to to getting to my potential maximum. Yeah. yeah. Um, I talked to to Simon Hitler the, last week, and because in this business we talk about potential moves all the time. Mm. Um, and he said that yeah, you, you never know if the grass is greener on the other side of the of the house. Um, do you have that in mind also that you you have it good here? Uh, you're one of the leaders here, play every Sunday. You never know what you're gonna get if you go away. 100% there's again two sides of this. What I have here is uh, of course Coaches know me, know how to 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 use my potential to max out the the performance. Um, yeah, just great a great club, you know, great uh, facilities, good uh, everything here to to improve, to perform. Um, knowing, of course, that there's a high chance that I'm playing on the weekend, and um, Yeah, this uh, steadiness, you know, the rhythm right now, I play it every game and it gives me confidence, you know, and I think also we we, we, we live from, from confidence, you know. Sometimes it's not like how talented you are or how long you can run. It's about being confident in what you do. It doesn't matter what position you play. If you're confident and you trust yourself, Then you do things where players that maybe have more potential, more talent, more running capacity, whatever, where they maybe fail because confidence is missing. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, you have also this 
where you ask yourself how would it look if you make a move somewhere else? How would it be? How is it to... Um, right now, you know, this is not to disrespect anybody, but right now there's... I'm, I'm playing in my position without having anybody who's making pressure on me. Mm. That's just the fact. That's not... Um, yeah, that's, that's how it is. But also to, to have somebody where you are knowing, oh, when I'm not giving 100% in training, then I might not play on the weekend, you know? And this fight for the position will always make the, the business and also the, the, yeah, the fight for the position, they will just make it more, uh, yeah, worth. It will be, I think it's easier to have somebody in your neck who's putting pressure on you every day. Mm -hmm. So, this big decision, ha have you set your mind of when you, or have, do you have a deal with CV uh, about when you have to make a decision? Because I know Bromby wants you to stay. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think there's, they said what they can do. And I said what I want. And um, right now, there was no no from my side. And there was also not a deadline or something, you know. And we're so far in right now. It would be a lie if I would say that I'm, that I'm not listening to what are the options. So, but it's May now. The season will be over in three weeks most likely. And um, as I said, there's no door closed. I know what I have, it, what I have here. I really appreciate everything. But uh, also beside the sports decisions, there's also family decisions. Uh, we talked about it. I mean, my wife is pregnant. We expect the baby end of July. And yeah, family is playing a big role in the decision. Mm -hmm. So, um, you will, if, I, if I'm not staying, you will not see me signing in China or Japan or having a, having a money move. It will be a family move, definitely. <laughs> and, um, so a Germany move? It, it, uh, this, is, this was always a goal, you know. Of course, we get, the ear gets a bit bigger when there's something coming up from Germany because, um, yeah, also that you have the two sides, as I said before. I really stepped up here, I developed as a player. How will it be somewhere else? But there's also the question, how will it be? How does the team look next year? How will it be after a good season so far? Maybe Europe? You don't all. know, you don't know. There's both sides, mm. very strong. Going beside is still very strong. I can only repeat myself that I'm really liking the club that I'm really feeling comfortable here and that I'm really appreciating what, what has been so far and what can maybe happen in the future. I have to ask you this, Tony, because we, we have a, an old striker here who's now playing in, in Copenhagen. <laughs> could you make the move? Could you, could you do that if Copenhagen came with a contract now? No. No. Why not? You're just a good German guy who came here for a few years, you know? Mm, I think it would be, I don't know, a moral thing. I mean, was, were there players who actually left, the, left one side and went straight to the other side? Did it happen? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's many years back. Not to not to protect Camille, for example. But I mean he, he went to Turkey. And it's it's still a big shame. Let's be clear, yeah. It's hard, it's a hard discussion. In his age, you know, and then keep Camille out of it. Yeah. Could you do it? Yeah, I would not do it. That's at least my feeling. 
I, I could now never. Now we have it on video. Yeah, and you can you can use it against me. Imagine in five years something's happening. Send me the video. We will. <laughs> and remind me. But no, because it's. I think there's there's more than money. There's more than. Than this. Good. I had to ask. Yeah. Um, and then. In the end here, now there's not too many German guys down there. Yes. Many Danish guys now. Yes. But are so they many Danish, but we live funny? in Denmark. <laughs> yes, but are they funny? The Danish guys? Yes. Yes, of course. But yeah. it's not about the country. No, no, but I know it's Heini and, and, and Bessie were... Well, yeah, but it, I think it's also a different kind of humor. Mm. And I think... Sometimes maybe it's a little bit more tricky for me to explain a joke in English than it is for in German, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would rather pick my language to, but I try my best to. So also Marvin get all the jokes. <laughs> yeah, actually he's laughing a lot because of me, <laughs> but I'm also laughing, of course, because of the other guys and and the other way around. But yeah, you you got some funny guys also there with Danish with a Danish passport. Who who are they? Oh. Who would you put on the comedy stage tomorrow if you had the to? The comedy stage mm. from the Danish guys. Yeah. No, um, can also be the. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. I'm. You know, it's also the sense of humor. You know, what mm. kind of jokes you like, what you're laughing at, and what not. I think from the team. I think Bruce, Bruce, um, his his nature, his character is uh, is quite funny. You know, also his jokes he's throwing in. Sometimes, um, Lasse, is also sense of humor is also. Yoto is just talking shit all day. <laughs> it's also funny in a in a weird way, but when, yeah. And yeah, I I think if I would pick one guy. And you had a championship in stand-up comedy. Maybe I would send Bruce in. Okay, you send Bruce. Yeah, that's it. good, good. Yeah, good one. Morton thinks he's funny, but he's not. Franne? Yeah, he's not funny. But don't tell him that. It's not funny. Shh. Not so loud. Yeah, that's actually. It. <laughs> and uh, Les also also told you to count how to twenty in Danish. Yes. Can you do it on camera? I did it a long time ago. I tried. Mm, try. Try. It's ein, two, three, vier, fünf, sechs, sü, oder ni, ti, elve, toll, traten, fjorten, fanten, seisten, süten, etten, nieten, uh, tül, tülve. Yeah. And then it's eine, tülve, tor, wow, tülve, wow, tülve. Wow, wow, now you're just showing off. <laughs> it's four years, but it's still a shame that I'm, yeah, I, I, I should have started earlier. But it's also not easy to learn the language, right? It's not. And everybody speaks English so good. That's, that makes things also very easy. But can we just uh, end the interview then with uh, something is not Danish, but Forza Brøndby to the camera? Again? Forza Brøndby. Forza Brøndby. Forza Brøndby. <laughs> That's all.